Good morning, everyone. Happy Tuesday to you. Uh, it's Rick here in my patio. Looking forward to bringing you a word. I got to give a shout out to my awesome and beautiful camera person. Say hi, Jamie. Hey, everybody. And we're excited to be with you today. I can't think of a better way to start our day just recognizing who God is and giving him praise. Let's do that right now. Lord, I come, I confess, bowing here, I find my rest. Without you, I fall apart. You're the one that guides my heart. Lord, I need you, oh, I need you, every hour I need you, my one defense, my righteousness, oh God, how I need Sin runs deep, your grace is more, where grace is found, is where you are, and where you are, Lord, I am free, holiness is Christ in me, Lord, I need Cannot stand, I'll fall on you. Jesus, you're my hope and stay. So teach my song to rise to you. When temptation comes my way. When I cannot stand, I'll fall on you. Jesus, you're my hope and stay.
Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Your faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my Like you, I am so ready for this pandemic to be over. I know we're all counting the days, but the question of the morning is, are we making the days count? Because here's the thing, following Jesus doesn't mean that we are going to suffer less than other people, but it should mean that we suffer better. Listen to James, the brother of Jesus, chapter 1, verses 2 through 4. My brethren, Count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. 
But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Now notice James says, count it all joy. In other words, we need to count on trials. He doesn't say if you have trials, but when you have trials. And so since trials aren't elective, since trials are a acquired course, since we can count on trials, we need to make our trials count. Because when trials come, there's an opportunity for God to do a work in us, to grow our character, to cause us to lean more on him. But there's also in that trial an opportunity for the enemy to step in and pour poison into our heart and to cause our character to decline. So hard times coming, not up for debate. What's up for debate is, is the hard time going to be transformative or not? And if you can't make it go away, as a follower of Jesus, you're called to make it count. There's a sense in which we're in school, and here's three questions we learn to answer during this classroom we call trials, okay? And here's question number one. What can I learn? What can we learn during this season? Now, whenever we suffer, the first thing we want to know is why. And maybe God's going to tell you why, but maybe he's not. And here's the thing. God doesn't have to exercise his sovereignty in a way that makes sense to us. God has shown us enough about who he is through the death and the resurrection of Jesus. He's shown us enough in the light that we should trust him in the dark when we don't understand why. But just because God doesn't tell us why doesn't mean God doesn't want us to learn. I'm often asked, well, Pastor Rick, do you think God wants me to learn something during this? God is always wanting you to learn something, no matter what you're going through. So in this current season, what are some things maybe God wants us to learn? The value of relationships, how much people really matter. The reality of our mortality, that we are but dust. We need to prepare for that. Uh, the illusion of control, that we can just map out the future and that the future has to answer to us. Maybe God wants us to learn the difference between happiness and joy that there's a kind of joy that should live in our hearts that doesn't depend on our circumstances. Maybe God wants us to learn to recalibrate our values, or, or maybe God wants us to learn his sufficiency, that when everything else is taken away, he is enough. Here's the thing. We're going to get through this season, but it would be tragic if we get through it no wiser than we were when we entered it. So question number one. To make the time count, what does God want you to learn? Question number two, how can I grow? You see, James says one potential destination of the path of trial is maturity. And James is assuming that's what we want to do, right? We all want to become complete, to become mature, to grow. Although the way we pray might suggest otherwise. Have you noticed often we pray more for our comfort than we pray for our growth in character? We're in a season of trial, and typically what we pray is, God, make it go away, instead of, God, please use it to make me look more like Jesus. Uh, listen to Paul in Romans 5. We can rejoice, too, when we run into problems and trials, for we know that they help us develop endurance, and endurance develops strength of character, and character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. Now, let me be clear. It is right to pray for an end to this pandemic. But what are you asking for God to start in you during the pandemic? You remember Paul had this thorn in the flesh, some physical issue that caused him great discomfort. And he prayed and he asked God to take it away. And God never rebuked him for the prayer. But God didn't give him the answer he wanted. God gave him a different answer. God gave him a better answer. God gave Paul a fresh experience of his sustaining grace. And so, what if God is saying to us right now, instead of giving you the comfort you want, I'm giving you the challenge you need to learn to lean on my grace. Is it okay with you that God answers your prayer however he wants to most build your character into the image of Christ? Because you can count on his faithfulness to do that. What am I going to learn? How can I grow? And one more question. Who can I bless?
Because it's true, hurt people hurt people, but it's also true that hurt people can really help people. Because nobody blesses people who suffer like people who understand suffering. Satan wants to use this time to get us to focus on ourselves. And God wants to leverage what we're learning and how we're growing so that we can focus on others. Again, Paul at 2 Corinthians 1 verse 4, he comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort others. When they are troubled, we will be able to give them the same comfort God has given us. So one prayer for us is, Lord, how can this trial, this season, this pandemic expand my heart's capacity to love other people? Have you ever thought that perhaps what we're going through is preparing us for what God is going to be calling us to. Because God is not going to waste this season. You can count on it. Now, let me be clear again. I am ready for this season to be over. But what is not yet removed can always be redeemed. What is God teaching you? How is God growing you? Who is God blessing through you? Because if you can't make it go away, you can always make it count. Let's pray. And so God, we thank you that in the midst of this season that we want you to take away, that you will give us things we can take away from this season that will bless us, bless our loved ones, and bless your church. Help us stay on mission, God. Help us make this season count. For Jesus' glory, and we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, it looks like we're through just in time for you to go to school. Have a great day, and we will see you tomorrow.